What would you do if you discovered a UFO warp drive in a junkyard? Of course, I'm sure the first thing you would do is you would just go and try to pass it off as your high school science project. God, I love the 80s. When it comes to film, the 80s is such a fun, odd, and frankly, amazing decade. There are so many films that I'm still discovering that I totally missed the first time. But there are also films that I saw, but so much time has passed that I've simply forgotten a lot of the plot points. One of the things I love about about doing this channel is that it has given me a wonderful excuse to go back and find or discover films from the past. This video is about rediscovering a film that I actually saw a lot of when it was on the cable rotation in 1987 and 1988, but I haven't watched it in 30 years. It's a film that I'm sure some of you remember, but I would not be surprised that if you are not a Gen Xer, it is totally off your radar. This movie is a typical 80s movie that is an enjoyable trip back to the summer of 1985. My Science Project came out on August 9th, 1985. It was the directorial debut of Jonathan Boutel, who had written the delightful 80s cult film The Last Starfighter. It starred John Stockwell as Michael Harlan, and you know Stockwell probably from a movie he made a few years earlier called Christine, directed by none other than John Carpenter, based on a Stephen King novel. Michael Harlan, who John Stockwell plays, is a high school student with a love of mechanical things, especially his 1968 Pontiac GTO, which, to be honest, was the object of my affection for a long, long time. This car is amazing. More on that later. Michael has a problem, though. To pass high school, he needs to complete his science project, and he's reminded of this fact by his hippie science teacher, Dr. Roberts, played by Dennis Hopper, who only a few years earlier had been consuming 28 beers, a half gallon of rum, coupled with three ga grams of cocaine on a daily basis, but of course was now in the process of getting sober, and in about a year he would make both Hoosiers and Blue Velvet. Michael asks out the nerdy Ellie Sawyer, played by Danielle Von Zernick, who you might remember from La Bamba, and together they decide to have this wonderful romantic date at a nearby junkyard so Michael can find some junk to pass off as a science project. Well, he finds something, but it's a UFO warp engine, which looks suspiciously like those plasma light bulbs you would get from Spencer Gifts, you know, just after you would look at all the Heather Thomas posters in the back. I, I digress. The UFO warp drive is a problem. It sucks all electricity into it and ultimately creates some type of wormhole where different time periods run together. This film is relatively slow early on, which I think if you're a kid of the 80s, you don't mind that. It doesn't even phase you. But I can totally see all of us today it doesn't matter when you were born, just kind of getting bored up until the warp drive acts up. And when it does, this film is a ton of fun. And it, what's interesting is it has this odd innocence to it, uh, much like The Last Starfighter. There are some standout moments for me when I rewatched it. The first is when they realize the drive is about to take all the power from the local power station, and Michael has to race in that beautiful Pontiac GTO against the power-sucking warp drive that's running through the power lines, and they have to get there first so they can blow up the power station to stop it. It is such a fun scene, and it has some surprising tension to it, and frankly, it's well-conceived, and it's a crowd-pleasing moment. Another standout for me is Fisher Stevens' character, Vince Latello. You know, he's your typical loyal, wise-cracking sidekick uh, that is just juxtaposed against the serious Michael. Stevens is funny, and I remember quoting many of his lines to my friends on a regular basis. Finally, and, and I think this is the most surprising to me when I did the rewatch, the special effects are good. For 1985, they're really good. And there's especially a, a bizarre moment uh, when the warp drive causes a T-Rex to show up at the high school gym. And of course, the gang has to bring it down with their M16s. The effects are really good, though. In fact, Butel would later go on to create Luma Pictures, you know, an effects house that has worked on a lot of the projects that you've seen in the movie theaters in the last, like, 10, 15 years. This movie is a fun journey back to 1985. It has some exciting moments, funny moments. It has this Back to the Future vibe, which came out around the same time, but it also has this winsomeness to it that many of the films of the same type didn't have. If this is something you remember from your cable-watching summer days of the 80s, you might want to go back and watch it. It might just surprise you. 
But also, if it passed you by and you missed it, or you just have a curiosity of 80s genre films, this might be a film that you want to check out. What are some films that you've gone back and revisited that you haven't seen in a long time that you would recommend all of us to check out again? Put it down in the comments below and let us all know. Thanks so much for watching.